first off, welcome back to the, to the top flight out here. Um, it's been a couple of years, but after running uh, the uh, Corvette program for a number of years, now you're back in a, in a top flight prototype, only now it's the GTP Acura. You've had some time with this new car. Um, what are your initial impressions of the 06? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, I mean, I wish I would have had some more seat time, you know, leading into Daytona, but, you know, at this point, I feel as prepared as I can be. We did, you know, a day and a half at Sebring and two days at Daytona uh, in 2023. So I feel like I understand kind of what the car is doing, but at the same time, I haven't been on, on track with a bunch of other cars, especially with traffic. So that's going to be a big part of the roar for me is kind of getting comfortable back in traffic and kind of seeing where you can make moves because the last time, you know, I was in a prototype with the DPI class, which had, I think, 30% more downforce and a little bit less power. So the places that you were making passes are going to change you know, in the GTP car. So um, it's been fun. It's been a new challenge. Obviously, it's, it's a much different animal than, than what I'm used to. Uh, but it's been a fun challenge to kind of get an understanding of what, what, what it takes to kind of be fast in the GTP car. Yeah. Having spent the past couple of years in GTD Pro, does it give you a bit of a new appreciation for... Uh, what everyone goes through knowing that the uh, prototypes are racing around them and you have to have your own race while not ruining theirs. Yeah, I mean, it's always a balance. I, I think, you know, I, I grew up in GT racing back in, in Grand Am and transitioned to prototypes in 2013. So I've seen both sides of it. You know, a lot of guys either do one or the other class and kind of, I wouldn't say disrespect the other class, but probably don't have as good of an understanding of what's going on in that class and that they're on the limit and where they can make moves that are you know safe and understanding for, for each class so I think coming back you know to prototypes now obviously I have more experience in the GT class the last couple of years to kind of get an understanding of kind of who races in what way what kind of style they are they, they race with uh, where to pass where not to pass where I didn't like guys passing where I know I can get I can defend Mm -hmm. um, and not lose any time. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a fun kind of new learning curve again, you know, throughout the whole year. All right. This year you have uh, Luis Delatraz as your full-time teammate. And he's had a lot of success over in Europe. But what does he bring to this program? Yeah, Luis has been, you know, one of the quickest prototype drivers around the world the last couple of years. Uh, he's won pretty much every LMP2 championship there's to win. Uh, he's always one of the quickest guys, in, you know, in every race he's in. So... He was with the team last year as third driver. He got the pull at Petit Le Mans, so he obviously knows the car very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, yeah, coming back to prototype racing, he's a good guy to kind of pick his brain to kind of understand driving style differences and, and things like that. So he's been great. He's, he's very young but very experienced, and I think, you know, we'll make a good pairing this year. All right. In addition to your sports car exports last year, you made your NASCAR Cup Series debut at Coda with Hendrick Motorsports in points of the injured James Elliott. Bit of a trial by fire, but... Uh... How would you describe the experience in NASCAR? Uh, it was chaotic. Um, I think, yeah, definitely thrown in at the deep end, you know, with, with it being such a late call to do that race. Um, you know, usually a rookie like Shane Van Gisberg and, and a, a lot of the Joey Hand, I think, they all got one test day kind of leading in to, uh, to the race. And mm -hmm. for Jensen and I, it was kind of a late call to both Dakota, and we kind of just went straight to the weekend without, you know, turning a, a lap in the car. And you get 50 minutes of practice, uh, the tires are only good for like two laps, so by the time you start getting comfortable, the tires have already dropped a couple seconds worth of lap time. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing experience. You know, practice and qualifying went way better than expected. You know, we, we progressed through the qualifying rounds and, and ended up fourth, so that was obviously the highlight of me, my weekend. And then once the race started, it was kind of uh, mayhem, so uh, I went into survival mode really quick and kind of just getting an understanding of where I was getting pushed around. Um, and I started pushing back halfway through the race, but I think at that point I had lost too much track position. So it was a good experience, a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, now uh, all the focus is on, on Daytona. In addition to that, you had a couple of call it races at Portland and at the Roble in Charlotte. That time you had a little more notice going in. Um, were you actually able to get any test time prior to Portland? No, no test time. Just some, just I think a day in the simulator to to kind of learn the track and, and learn a bit of the car. But yeah, it was it was kind of the same deal. Was, I think it was 20 minutes of practice at Portland to kind of learn the car and the track. So uh, that one was again chaotic, but uh, that race was actually going really well. I felt super comfortable and confident. I think we ran sixth for most of the day, mm -hmm. and uh, and then in the last stage the gearbox broke. So. 
Um, that I felt like I left that weekend feeling comfortable, and then when we went to the Roval, uh, I just didn't seem to have the pace that I felt uh, and the confidence that I had at, at Portland. So that weekend didn't go super well, but yeah, I loved being with the college guys. It's a great group. Uh, they're a lot of fun. They're, they're real racers. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be exciting to watch Ben Gisberg in there with them this year. Oh, yes. A lot of people are looking forward to that. Um, but speaking of NASCAR, are you looking to uh, try to do some more NASCAR this year? Uh, I mean, I'm not actively pursuing it at this point. I think, you know, I've got a lot on my plate learning the, the new class in GTP here with Acura and, and Wayne Taylor Racing. But I am going to try to, you know, maybe a late model race again later this year. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, just the style of racing was enjoyable. The culture in the paddock or in the garage area was really fun. Uh, so that that's something I'd, I'd like to pursue this year. Yeah, um, I forget. Was that uh, North Wilkesboro? North Wilkesboro, year? yeah. Yeah, that was that was a fun, you know, whole part of my year was kind of understanding a little bit of the oval racing and, and the late model style racing. I did two test days there mm -hmm. uh, in the North Wilkesboro weekend. And when I signed up to do the weekend, I didn't realize how... Uh, how big of an event it was going to be and then when I showed up and they told me I had to actually qualify for the race I was like, like okay maybe we're not even going to make the race at this point so it was cool to make the final um, and run I think we finished 20th so it was a good experience had a lot of fun um, I have a lot of respect for what those guys do you know on a weekly basis so I'd love to give that another shot. Yeah the idea of a DNQ in sports car racing that hasn't really been a thing since I don't know, 2000 or so, so yeah. uh, they just stop accepting entries so yeah. you don't have DNQ. Exactly, yeah. Well. But um, it's a new experience for someone like you, and it puts a little more pressure on you. Yeah, yeah, it did. I mean, we I think we were through practice kind of on the edge of making it um, on speed, so uh, yeah, it was pretty stressful. I think practice even got cut in half just because of rain delays and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when qualifying came around, you know, my heart rate was pretty high just even sitting in the car leading into the, into the lap that I was that I had to do. And I think we made we made the race by a few positions, but the lap times around a, a short track like that are so tight. So a little mistake is either going to get you in or, or you're going to go home. So uh, it definitely makes for an intense weekend, but it makes it that much more rewarding when, when things go well. To go back to North Wilkesboro this year, they have repaved the track since then. Yeah. So, uh, It'll be a very different experience. Yeah, I'm sure. I think, you know, last year, obviously, the race was all about tire deck and tire management. Um, it was fun to drive on the old surface. You know, you felt the history driving around there was bumpy, tearing tires apart. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what the new pavement's like and, and see what the racing's going to be like. Yeah, I'd imagine it's probably going to be 15 miles an hour faster for laps or something like that. That's a lot. Because, yeah. um, the previous track surface was older than the both of us, so um, I think they were around, at least the cup cars were around like 108 miles an hour, and the track record is 119. Oh, wow. So, okay. um, yeah. Big difference. It's, it's going to be like night and day. If you go somewhere else, who knows? But it's great that you had fun doing that, man. Yep. This is Timmy Hill, driver of the 56 Toyota. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also check out one of those videos beside me and visit frontstretch.com for more racing content.